welcome back to my channel and if you're new here welcome today I'm going to do a get ready with me I have a date tonight with my husband uh, we're gonna go out on date night so I wanted to get ready with you guys and try a bunch of new products like the Gucci powder um, the Tarte cream bronzer the RMS Beauty uh, highlighter and I have the the lovely new Kosas bronzer and I also have the Mothership 7 Divine Rose 1 I'm gonna go do a look with I have the Guerlain foundation that's new that I'm going to try today I have a whole bunch of other products that I want to try with you guys so if you guys want to see these new products and how they perform and kind of chit chat and catch up keep watching so let's get started. I have a brand new sponge from Dose of Colors that I just got. I wanted to try it out. I've heard so many good things about this. Okay, I'm going to color correct. Well, this is the only one that's like not a new product that I'm testing. This is Charlotte Tilbury Color Corrector. This is not new. I mean, I've used this before. I and mean, there are some other products that I've maybe used once before, but I wanted to um, use that on camera with you guys. They're new products. This one is new, I've had this forever. So this is like the only one that's not new. As you guys know, I don't really get much sleep, so I like to color correct. You don't have to, you can skip that step. So I have this primer, this is by Ulla Hendrickson. It's the Banana Bright Face Primer. Uh, I got this a little while ago, I haven't used it. I think I used it maybe once. Um, I wanted to use it on camera today, so it's like a silicone based primer. I think it has silicone if I'm not mistaken. It's a moisturizing primer. I liked the eye cream, banana bright eye cream and the banana bright uh, moisturizer so I wanted to try the primer version. So it feels hydrating. I'm not sure if it did anything for like blurring pores or anything like that. It, it doesn't look like it did. Um, it feels very slightly tacky, not a lot. It's not, you know, something to write home about from what I can tell. Maybe like it gives that, maybe like this, it maybe it preps the skin in the way like the Magic Cream, Charlotte Tilbury Magic Cream does. Possibly like it moisturizes and plumps the skin maybe slightly, but that's about it. It doesn't do anything for like pore blurring or line filling. So next I have this Milk Makeup uh, blur stick. This is like the mini version. I didn't want to get the big version. I've had this for a while but I haven't used it yet. So I wanted to use it with you guys today. Um, I want to use that on my like pore areas. This is silicone based. No, this one if I'm not mistaken doesn't have silicone but it has, you know, it works like a silicone uh, pore filling primer if I'm not mistaken. So I just usually, you know, use a primer like this. My go-to is the Tarte one that's pore filling. Um, you know, you know what I'm talking about. Um, so today I just wanted to try this one. It seems like this does kind of blur pores. Yeah. I don't know if you guys can tell. It did blur my pores right here a little bit. It does do that and then it seems it fills lines a little bit too so that's a good sign so yeah that's usually the area that I I prime with a pore filling primer like this so that one's good I think it did the job so today I want to use this Guerlain foundation um, it's the Guerlain Natural Glow Foundation, 16-hour um, wear with sunscreen, broad spectrum SPF 20. So I have to. It's the Lessential Foundation. Um, it, I got it in two shades just because I wasn't sure. I mean, I mean, this is probably my shade, but I wanted to make sure that I had a darker one so I can mix just in case. There was no shade in between these two, so I had to get both. So this, the one, the lighter one is 045W and the darker one is 05W, so it's the warm one. So I'm going to mix these two. Well, let me first put the lighter one on and if it's too light, 
I've used this foundation once just so you guys know I'm gonna use a brush for this because the, this is like a medium coverage foundation so I'm gonna I think I'm gonna use a brush let me put the lighter one on first and see if I need to mix probably don't that seems like a pretty good match actually yeah it might even be a little darker than it. so I don't need to to mix I don't think yeah this might be a little too yellow I don't know too orangey Oh, that's a crazy color, you guys. Seems like very orangey. I, it doesn't show as bad on camera, but in person it looks really kind of like orangey-like. I don't like foundation uh, shades that change my skin color. I want to keep my skin color. I don't want to go lighter or darker. I just want to keep my, I mean, I'm already tan. So I like to keep that skin color if I could. Lately, I've bought a couple of foundations like the Tom Ford one online and I couldn't shade match it very well. I end up getting shades that are too light for my skin tone. I really hate that too. Um, oh, actually, you know what? Once I blend it out, it doesn't look bad. It's not too orangey once I blend it. I'm going to go back in with the Beauty Blender as you guys know. Like whenever I use a foundation brush for applying foundation I end up going back in with a beauty blender just to make sure there are no like brush marks I kind of like by the way I love this bottle design it's kind of cool it kind of sits you know tilted like that it's kind of cute and the and the lid is cute too just it just looks like a little cute cute little bottle I think this shade will work just fine without having to mix so now I have an, a shade that's too dark hopefully you know when this COVID is over you know next summer possibly when I go outside a lot more and I get a lot darker than this then I might be able to use the darker shade I bought but right now it seems this is a pretty good match so now I'm gonna go Pat it in with a beauty band blender just to make sure that there are no brush marks or streaks or anything like that. So I would say the coverage is definitely medium, but it's buildable. I think you can probably build it up to like a, almost a full coverage. So next I want to try this right here. This is the Pat McGrath. Um, concealer that everybody is raving about I really wanted to try this one out um, so let me try that today I have it in the shade light medium 14 let's try and see what people are saying it's as good as people are saying it is Blend it out with the Beauty Blender. So, first impressions. Um, it's a good concealer. I don't see it creasing whatsoever. But that's one nice thing I'm noticing right away. It is not like a total full coverage. I would say like almost full coverage but not quite like maybe a little more than a medium coverage concealer one thing i'm noticing is that it's not creasing it's not gathering into my fine lines or anything like that so that's a good sign so what have you been doing you guys quarantine continues um for the most part, um, things are opening back up where I live in Virginia. I'm in the uh, DC metro area. Things are opening like restaurants and stuff, but it's not, you know, fully open. My daughter's school is, is giving us two options, you know, either to completely do um, online learning or send her to school two days a week and then the rest of it be self-study so we're discussing that right now and it 
the decision is due on the 15th so we have to make a decision it's, it's tough choices you guys right now so how are you guys you guys have kids and what's going on with your school di districts let me know in the comments below if you guys are having any like you know crazy things happening with your kids schools oh, I don't know what to do you guys I don't know what to do um so now I'm going to try this new I bought this like when Pat McGrath was having a sale online that was like a month ago almost I think um, this is the um, the powder the Pat McGrath skin fetish sublime perfection blurring under eye powder so I have it in the shade medium so this is what it looks like I bought this like almost a month ago you guys I love that little tiny mirror in here by the way and I hear really good things about this powder saying that it's you know really blurring and everything oh my goodness it is you know you guys know my ride or die under eye powder is the Tom Ford um, translucent powder that I just love you know I've used it in many of my videos you guys know which one I'm talking about and I put it in favorites as well um, that thing is amazing it brightens the under eyes like crazy so probably because of the shade that I got it in maybe I I don't know maybe I need to get it in the lighter shade I'm not sure probably not but it's this is not as brightening as the Tom Ford one like Tom Ford translucent one is a little bit like it's got a little yellow tinge to it so it like brightens up under my eyes so this is not doing that it's not necessarily brightening my under eyes like I can still see the hollows of my eyes and it's not brightening it up but it is blurring like crazy maybe if I got the lighter shade like the totally translucent shade I think that's one shade lighter than this so maybe if I get that shade it will brighten more I am looking for two things when with an under eye powder one is to blur like this is doing a really good job with that the other one is to brighten up so that's the part this is not exactly doing for me but it's very beautiful very finely milled powder I mean I've touched this powder before it's so I mean it's you hear the noise it's like kind of like a baked kind of powder almost and it's so so silky so silky very silky so it is a great powder but it's probably not going to replace the Tom Ford one for me uh, but it's a very good alternative now I'm going to do my eyes very excited about this so this is the Pat McGrath Mothership uh, 7 Divine Rose 1 so you guys know I did a Divine Rose 2 tutorial as soon as it came out. I will link it up here. Um, you guys loved it. Um, I got a lot of feedback on that video. Really positive feedback. And this is the, I got Divine Rose 1. I was able to get my hands on the special packaging for Divine Rose 1. I bought this at the same time as uh, the Divine Rose 2. I bought them together. I had been wanting to get this when Divine Rose 2 came out. Um, I was planning to get Divine Rose 1, but then Divine Rose 2 came out and I never got around to doing a tutorial on the Divine Rose 1. So that's why I thought I would include this in this Get Ready With Me so I can actually do an eye look with this for you guys. I am very inspired when I look at this to do a, a very beautiful like rosy mauve look. I mean you can do like goldish looks and there's many other different looks you can go for. But I'm going to go, I think, today with the rosy Marvy look that, that I see in my mind's eye. So I'm going to use the shade Valoria first, this beautiful kind of mauve um, as a transition shade. Tonight I have date night um, with my husband. So that's what I'm getting ready for. My parents are here with us right now. They're actually trapped here because of COVID. They are visiting from abroad and, um, you know, got stuck here. So while my parents are still here with us, we want to be able to squeeze in a few date nights. Um, so I'm putting this higher, a little above my crease and I'm bringing it around to the outer corner in circular motions.
Then I'm going to go in to the shade Rose Dusk with a smaller blending brush right here, the shade Rose Dusk. It's a very pretty sort of uh, slightly shiny, shimmery, mauve shade. And I'm going to use that right beneath on almost the outer corner but not quite just a little bit inward from the outer corner right there so this one's like very like pinky though it looks much mauvier in the pan when you put it on it comes across a lot pinkier than it shows on in the pan so I'm going to put this on the outer two-thirds of my eyelid so now I'm going to kind of bring this to the, the actual crease remember we put the other color above the crease so this one's gonna go into the crease like that but not all the way so that's how I want it now I'm going to take the same um, blending, small blending brush and I'm going to go into the shade Extreme Mahogany right here. This one right there, just a light tap. And I'm going to put that on the very outer corner, outer V to define the outer V right there, very end of the eye. Just a little shading right there in the corner. And I'm going to bring it kind of in along the lash line just a little ways in like on, on an angular um, way. Like that. Can you guys see? I'm just uh, running it along the outer edge of the lash band right there, lash line. And then I'm going to bring it up in an angular way. like that so it gives that sort of slanted kind of look in the outer V now I'm going to take this shade Love Lace right here and I'm going to take it on my finger and I'm going to put it like right on the center and bring it almost all the way in but not white to the inner corner. I'm just going to put it all over the lid just mostly in the middle without bringing it into the inner corner very much. Just leave it right there. Okay, now I'm going to take a small highlighting brush little tiny one like this one right here and I'm going to go into this beautiful beautiful iridescent shade here it's called iridescent pink 003 so it's this one right here in the corner this iridescent shade right there and I'm going to take that and I'm going to put that in the inner inner part of the eyelid and I'm going to bring it up into the um, eye for it to meet that shade that we put in the middle. So like that. It's actually a lot more pinky than it is light. So it's good. I mean it looks kind of white almost in the pan. But on the lid it turns up a lot more iridescent pink than white or pearl pearlish you know what I mean like it doesn't have doesn't show that actual pearl shimmer that it shows in the pan it's rather like an iridescent pink so that's what I put in the inner part of the inner one third of the eyelid we have uh, the love lace shade in the middle we have the iridescent pink in the inner part and then we have the uh, extreme mahogany and rose dusk on the outer part
And then I'm going to take this Astral Solstice shade right there. This is one of her special shades. So I'm going to take that and I'm going to actually highlight my inner corner with it. So it could pop. There. So I'm going to use that to pop my inner corner right there. I'm going to bring it on the lower lash line at the beginning a little bit too to pop that. Okay, now I'm going to do the um, under eyes using pretty much the same shades. I'm going to take a flat definer brush and I'm going to go in with that extreme mahogany shade. And then I'm going to put that on the outer two, one third of the eye. And now I'm going in with the rose dusk color it with the same brush and I'm going to put it right in the middle right next to that outer color on the lower lash line and then I'm going to bring it you know where it stops where the uh, inner corner highlight that I brought on the lower lash line I'm going to bring it right up to the end stop and now I'm going to take a small pencil brush and I'm going to go in with Valoria and I'm going to blend it down blow it out a little there you go now I'm going to take a flat shader brush like this one synthetic one and I'm going to take the uh, this shade in the corner called uh, skin glow nude here in this corner this one right there I'm going to highlight my brow bone with it. That's the eye look, you guys. I think it's pretty gorgeous. So now to to finish everything up, I'm going to use the Pat McGrath um, eyeliner. This is now my new Ride or Die eyeliner, you guys. I have used this. This is new product. It's new to me, but it has replaced my um, Tarte Man Eater eyeliner that I just love. This one does the job for you. It is so easy. Did you see? Did you see how easy that was? It just kind of do the job for you. You know, um, seriously. Like if you go to Pat McGrath into Instagram and you can see like you know those glamorous little mini tutorials she does, like you know where she puts you know eyeshadows like in two three seconds they're not sped up but you know in her in that you know all you can see is like her touching this eyeliner and the eyeliner's done I thought that was a trick but seriously you can do that if you want to see like I just did it this is like my new ride or die eyeliner you guys I mean now I'm going to try another new product this is also new to me but I have used it a couple of times this is the Urban Decay brow bit blade this thing is pretty fantastic so one end you have the brow pencil that's like nice and has a nice fine tip which I love I can't stand ones that have those like flat thick ones mm -hmm. and on the other end you get a little tiny like like a marker pen type thing with like a very very tiny brush So I like the pencil side, it's good. I mean, nothing mind-blowing, but it's definitely very good with a very fine um, tip. And now I'm gonna use the little brush side to make little hair-like strokes. Yeah, I mean, I like it. I, I think it's really good. I like the little brush tip side, but I mean, it's nothing like mind-blowing or anything. My I don't know what my, my favorite brow pencil is. I like the Hourglass one. I like the Benefit one. I don't like the Anastasia one. No, I don't like that one. I don't get the hype about that. Um, yeah, this Urban Decay brow blade, it's pretty good. Pretty good. The only problem is that because it has the brush tip and the pencil tip, it doesn't have a spoolie for you to brush the hair with. So to, it's kind of hard to blend it. That's the only problem. You have to use another spoolie. But it's, it does a pretty good job, um, even without blending. Okay, so now I'm going to use this cream bronzer. This is the Tarte Breeze Cream Bronzer in the shade Grace Bay. So it's like the, the medium shade that they had. I've used this once before, and it's pretty good. I wanted to use it with you guys.
are you guys watching anything interesting on TV, on Netflix? We have exhausted all the TV programs we like to watch. And, you know, everything is now, like, between seasons. So, like, there's nothing on TV to watch. And, you know, you're trapped in the house for the most part. And nothing good to watch on TV these days. It's really annoying. Uh, no movies. Nothing good coming out, you guys. I mean, nobody wants to put anything out that's new. No new movies because they don't want, like, it to be, like, a home premiere, you know. So... Are you guys having the same problems? I'm like watching old stuff that I've already watched. Not very good um, t TV shows, kind of run of the mill ones. So it's actually really nice. The Screen Bronzer, um, it's blendable. It, it's kind of very easy to put on. You just have to use a little densely packed pinched brush. To put it on I find it like quite fairly easy to to do it kind of blends itself out it's not too wet it's not too dry um, it's just the right amount I, I like it so it's kind of like this is kind of like the um, Chanel Soleil Tan Day Chanel it's too light for most of us with tan or deeper skin tones so this is like the answer to us dark skin people um, you can, um, you know, this actually comes in darker shades that you can use. It works kind of almost the same as Soleil uh, Tande Chanel, although Tande Chanel is a, the Chanel one is a little bit better, in my opinion, like the older formula. By the way, they reformulated it, and I hear the new version sucks. And you'd think that when they reformulated it, they would come out with uh, darker, you know, more shades. But they didn't. They like nothing improved, and they they ruined the formula. I don't know what they're thinking. Chanel. Okay, so now I'm very excited to try this uh, Gucci powder. By the way, it came in the sleeve. It's all dirty now. I've used it a couple of times. This is the Gucci Podre de Beauté powder in neutral, uh, in shade five. So I so this is what it looks like. It's it's a beautiful component, by the way, you guys. And you can lift this up. This is like where the powder is, and inside there's a uh, powder puff that you can use. I don't I don't really use this unless, of course, I take this in my purse to do touch-ups. Then that would kind of come in handy. But usually I don't. I use use a brush like my La Mer brush. So I'm gonna go ahead and set my face now. I have the Fenty cream blush to use. Should I use it under the powder or on top? I think I'm going to use this one on top of my after setting my face. I like this powder a lot you guys. It's really the finish is just beautiful. Gorgeous finish. Um, it has like a, a little bit of a scent to it but it's not overwhelming. It's a beautiful kind of airbrushed finish. It sets the face in a thin thin veil rather than making it look really like powdery and crazy that's what I love about this a lot of the you know setting I don't like setting powders that are like really cakey and powdery so this came out at the same time as the Gucci new Gucci lipsticks and I did a review I did live lip swatches and everything and I had 12 shades that I reviewed for you guys uh, I will link that up here make sure to check that out so now something I've been very excited to try this is the new Kosas bronzer that everybody's raving about I have it in the the medium shade I can't wait to try this out I actually haven't tried this before I, I received it and I just kept it in my drawer so this is what it looks like this is the medium shade um, it's kind of really it's really beautiful let me swatch it for you guys uh, it's a nice sort of glowy bronzer so this is what it looks like swatched the only thing is it doesn't come with a mirror so I have to use a different mirror let me use my um, refer bronzer brush to put this on whoops took a little too much it's by the way guys it's very pigmented you don't want to take too much like I just did so I have to now tame that down with a little bit more powder by the way I didn't do any contouring today because I don't have like a new contour stick to try on besides I didn't feel like contouring today and I'm just gonna do like a brown tour reaction with 
my two bronzers that I use cream and powder today. Yeah, I love it. It's a very nice kind of like a subtle glow the bronzer has and it, you know, kind of blurs the skin a little bit, I feel. And it's a beautiful warm color that's not red, not orange, nothing like that. So it's a very beautiful color. It's a beautiful bronzer. I would totally recommend it. Very little went a very long way. So I'm going to kind of take my powder brush and kind of tame that bronzer down a little bit. Now I'm going to take the Fenty Beauty Cream Blush. I have it in the shade Rose Latte here. This is what it looks like. And this one looks very mauve in the pan, but it... Actually, I'm going to use the Tom Ford uh, Dense Blush Brush to put this on. Um, this looks very like mauve in the pan, but it's a very rosy blush when you put it on the skin. So the blush you want to put on the apples of your cheeks, you guys. You don't want to bring it, you know, like do it like bronzer or contour. A lot of people don't really understand how to put blush on you have to bring it a little bit more to your to the apples of your cheeks so it gives you that sort of flushed look which is like the goal of a of a um, blush in my opinion you guys already know I've used this blush before and I love it I love this shade I've used this shade too before it's perfect it actually goes on very nicely blends out like a dream Fenty cream blushes they're 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 bomb.com I'm gonna top that with a powder blush by Buxom these are the Buxom primer infused blushes um, I have it in the shade Wanderlust here I'm going to top my um, cream blush with this uh, powder blush. By the way, these uh, Buxom blushes, very pigmented too, you guys. So you don't want to, uh, you want to tap your brush and put it lightly. I love the, this I can tell right away. I bought several shades. I have two or three more shades up there. I have heard such good things about these blushes. I wanted to, sh to try. It's really beautiful. It's, I don't know how to describe it. It has a, like a, a slight sheen to them, but it doesn't emphasize your texture or anything like that. I'm going to take my powder brush and kind of buff my face so that the blush kind of is gets stained down a bit. Yep, love both blushes I used today. Okay, so next up, I want to try this MAC Prep and Prime Lip Primer before I put my lip color. So apparently this fills in lines on the lips and like preps the lips. Let's see how it works. I have the Makeup Forever Lip Pencil, uh, the Artist Color Pencil in the shade Boundless Berry. Okay, so I have the Pat McGrath Matte Trans Lipstick in uh, Flesh 3. This is like a very beautiful kind of mauve rose. Yeah, I think that complements the eye color. I mean, maybe not... I didn't expect it to be this dark but it still works with the eye look I think I might tone it down with a um, with a gloss beautiful color though now I'm gonna go with the Fenty Beauty gloss balm in the shade fussy right in the middle sort of okay good I like it so now I'm going to go in with a um, highlighter. I have this cream highlighter by Hourglass. I want to use that first. And then I bought this a while ago. Actually, I've never used it though. wanted to try that with you guys on camera. I'm going to put it over powder, of course. So like that, it looks, looks pretty good. It's nice and it doesn't te emphasize texture. Very smooth look yeah I like it it's beautiful okay very cool it looks nice and smooth and gives a beautiful shine I could stop right there but I'm going to top it with this RMS Beauty luminizing powder in the shade Grande Dame um, so this I got a while ago I've used it maybe like once before I want to um, 
swatch this for you guys. Let me um, swatch the cream brown uh, highlighter too. So this is the cream highlighter by Hourglass and this is the RMS Beauty highlighter, powder highlighter. So I'm going to use my Anastasia highlighter brush and I'm going to go right on the top of my cheekbone. This one is a really good one you guys. It doesn't like really emphasize texture on your face, which I love. And it's a very beautiful like subtle glow. It doesn't have like tongues of glitter. It's very like like very smooth glow, if that makes sense. And I forgot to kind of brontour my nose. So I'm gonna just do that right now. Just a little bit. This is new, I just bought this, but this is like, I'm not new to this product. I, this is just my a third or fourth uh, tube. I just got this new in during the Sephora VIB sale, but I'm using it for the first time today. But I have used this particular uh, mascara before. This is one of my favorite ones, Marc Jac Jacobs um, mascara. Do you guys see? I mean, like I just, you know, finished putting mascara on, like, do you see, it looks like I'm wearing false lashes. It lengthens and, and volume give volume to um, lashes. I love this mascara, it's one of my favorites. I love this one and Pat McGrath's uh, Fetish Eyes Mascara. And I like Charlotte Tilbury's uh, Legendary Lash 2 version. I, I love all those three mascaras. And I have other ones I like. Miss Your Big and by Lancome, that's one that I like. I'm gonna set my face now. Um, I actually had to run and do something. So this is the finished look, you guys. Um, I think it came out really nice. I love the eye look. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I'm trying new makeup products, reviewing them, uh, especially the Pat McGrath Mothership 7 uh, Divine Rose 1 palette. I look that I did with it and all the new products like the Gucci powder and uh, you know Fenty blush and the uh, um, and the the Kosas bronzer and all that that I tried today. Let me know down in the comments below which ones you guys like, which ones you have and plan to buy. My channel's growing. I'm almost to a thousand subscribers, so please please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I will see you guys in my next video.